Hi guys, so I'm here today to reflect a little bit on my reading specifically in 2019. Basically I've just got like a bunch of arbitrary stats, I'm not sure why these are the ones I have noted down or feel like you might be interested in. I did ask on Instagram what you would be interested in and um, I got a few responses to that request so I think I've included most of the things you asked to know about in these stats and then also there's a few other things I just thought were interesting. Um, I think these kind of videos are often initiated by the My Year in Books on Goodreads where Goodreads kind of wraps up some of your stats on your behalf based on what you've marked as read. Um, so I will share some of those with you and then I've kind of calculated some other stats myself. So I've gone through and kind of totted things up. I didn't keep a track of anything during the year. I think I might have started a spreadsheet at the beginning of the year. But I'm just not consistent with that. You know, I mark everything on Goodreads and that's where I keep a note of things. So I wasn't doing this throughout the year, but I sat down, took a little bit of time, counted up things like how many adult, young adult children's books I read, how many books I gave various star ratings, etc, etc. But I think the most important stat here, the one that most people want to know, is how many books did I read? Now, I have two numbers to provide to you here. There is a number of books I read and a number of books I will be referring to throughout this video. Technically, I read 148 books throughout the year of 2018, which is incredible. Like, I've never read that many books before in my life. Like, even when I was a child, and I used to, as a child, um, set myself a goal of 100 books every year, and they were children's books, so they were quicker to read. Um, even if I was a child, I still think they were kind of shorter and I consumed more at a greater speed. Um, but I don't think I ever got anywhere like 148. So this is kind of my, my biggest reading year as it goes. Um, I think there's various reasons for that. I mean, I could sit here and get all philosophical for a while and try and figure out why I read so much, what was it that I was reading that meant I read so much, but there you go, that's why I read. However, 20 of those books, as you may very well know, were um, the long list for the uh, Blue Peter 2020 Children's Book Awards, which I was a judge for this year. Again, one of the most incredible experiences of my life, one of the best things I did in, in 2019, absolute joy to be a part of that and um, read these books and talk about them alongside the other two judges who were also fascinating people and I, yeah, really enjoyed that experience, loved every book I read, obviously we had to shortlist some of those, so we shortlisted three fiction books and three non-fiction books which means six out of the 20, but I genuinely enjoyed them all, even if there were reasons that we felt these were the ones that needed to be shortlisted. And in case you're wondering, I'm not involved in the process of picking the winner. The winner of each category is actually chosen by children, which I think is exactly the way it should be, because these are children's books, and we just kind of narrowed it down for them a little bit and helped out, I hope. But I'm not going to be including those 20 books in my overall stats, just because I feel like, you know, I didn't pick those up of my own accord, um, I, I want to focus on what I read recreationally. So all of the stats I'm talking about here and all the numbers I'm giving you are referring to the 128 books I read recreationally, although occasionally those books would feed into my, you know, PhD or um, work I was doing on YouTube, they were generally books I picked up of my own accord. So without further ado, let's talk about those 120 books, shall we? Although allow me to backtrack for a moment because I did also want to mention how many books I didn't finish this year and those according to what I can remember because occasionally I don't keep track of things I don't finish reading is that there was nine books I started in 2019 and gave up on um, for one reason or another. Some of those um, experiences I kind of vlogged like, because I was reading them for other videos so I discussed why I DNF them in those videos such as um, reading the lowest rated books on my TBR or reading the highest rated books on my TBR. I think both those videos included a DNF and then I also did a video midway through the year where I talked about some of the books that I DNF'd at that point. So that all, so that also happened. But of the 128 books I read, I gave five books two stars, which is lovely to know that I'm picking up, generally speaking, books that I at least get some enjoyment of. I, I would say two stars is a book I didn't really enjoy reading, but um, I wouldn't say it is complete and utter rubbish. I feel like, who am I to say a book is rubbish? But I have given books one stars before because I have genuinely felt like this is this is bad and I can't see why anyone would like it. Whereas two stars is, okay, it's for somebody else but I didn't get anything from it or there was something that really annoyed me despite things that I might have otherwise enjoyed. I then gave 29 books three stars, which for me is, you know, like, middle of the road, enjoyed myself during the reading experience, will probably forget about it in a month or two. 
We then have 69 books getting four stars, which is the biggest category um, of books, and that's wonderful. It means that I am picking up books overall that I'm really enjoying because four stars is, you know, I think my average rating for a reason is because it's a rating that means I really enjoyed this book. I would probably recommend it to a lot of people. It just wasn't perhaps exactly what I wanted it to be. I would have added something, taken something away, or just um, it's not something I'm, I'm going to reread necessarily. Although, I mean, star ratings are a little bit arbitrary, aren't they? I don't know. It depends how you do them. I kind of just rate things as I feel in the moment occasionally going back and changing things but not often and there were books in my best books of the year which I initially gave four stars so that goes to show that sometimes um, just because a book's not necessarily perfect um, doesn't mean that it doesn't then become one of those books that really stays with you and that you want more people to read which really kind of seems to defeat the purpose of uh, star ratings and I think that's also why I don't often really talk about star ratings in my reviews or wrap ups because I don't think that that important I mean obviously two stars means I didn't, wouldn't recommend it and five stars means I would but other than that it's all like a little bit wishy-washy and then I gave 25 books five stars which is wonderful. In terms of the kind of books I was reading I read only 13 non-fiction books, which is about 10% of my reading as um, I'm talking about the 128 books I read recreationally, which is less than I've read in the past few years. At the beginning and middle of this year, I really wasn't reading much non-fiction. I really fell out of the habit of non-fiction. And I love non-fiction, as you've seen even from my best books of the year video. There were still five non-fiction books in there because I loved those ones so much. But a lot of them I read in the second half of the year as I was getting back into non-fiction. I talked a little bit about this on Instagram randomly. I remember talking about it on there, but not really on my channel. Which was that I'd fallen out of the habit and wanted to make a conscious effort to be reading at least one non-fiction book a year. Which, you know, 13 books does average out to hey, those 12 months in a year. I read at least one a month. But... I want to read more than that. I think that's like a bare minimum for me personally because I think non-fiction is um, really important um, to me as a human being and expanding my mind and helping me understand things and um, I think develop thought processes if that makes sense and I love learning. So. I didn't read as much non-fiction as I would like in the year, I, I'm not annoyed at myself but it's something I would like to get back into and I think I have done as the year has gone on which I hope to continue into 2020 because I know in years when I've read loads of non-fiction there's been so many fantastic books in, in that selection that I've then gone on to recommend to so many people and I really feel like a better person for it. So I would say for 2020, if we're talking about very vague goals, I would like to read at least two a month. So hopefully um, at the end of 2020, I'll have read at least 24 non-fiction books. That would be nice. Again, categories I didn't read much in. I only read five poetry collections. One of my DNFs, or maybe two of my DNFs were also poetry collections, but that I would think is less than in the past as well. I haven't actually done a tally of that. But it doesn't feel like a lot. Um, so I would like to discover some new poets in the new year that I really, really enjoy because when I because when I find a poet that I really enjoy, I tend to go back and read their back catalogue. And um, again, I do like poetry, so <laughs> this is not a reflection of what I like and don't like. It's just the habit, I think. And I only read one play, which isn't that surprising. I don't tend to read a ton of plays. I read twenty two graphic novels, which are, are comic book volumes that I just sort of bung those together, which is fine. I, I don't have any goals in terms of graphic novels either way, so I'm I'm happy. Well, that I read those, I enjoyed most of them, so that's a good thing. And not specifically a format, but something more generally that crosses genre boundaries. Uh, but I wanted to have a look at specifically is how many LGBTQ plus books I read. So these are books with um, central characters who could be considered LGBTQ plus. Um, I, I, not like a brief reference to a side character, that's not really enough for it to have fallen into this category. And it's not necessarily to do with the author's sexuality or gender identity, because I don't always know that and I don't think authors always talk about that and it's not always easy to find that out. So it didn't seem um, the most relevant, although I do very much encourage you to read own voices when it comes to LGBTQ plus literature. I was more interested in the characters of the books I was reading and that was 33 books which is less than a third um, which to some people is probably amazing and I still think that's great that's 33 new LGBTQ plus books I've read many of which I would recommend but I have been making such a conscious effort this year to pick up and read LGBTQ plus books that this 
surprised me. I was expecting this number to be higher. As I'm sure you've noticed, I participated in multiple queer lit readathons. I've been doing videos recommending like queer fantasy, and I've been keeping an eye out and looking for recommendations. So I think this is more of a reflection of still how hard it is to find LGBTQ plus literature across the genres. That's not to say there isn't lots of literature out there about LGBTQ plus characters, but it's not always as mainstream as, you know, still heterosexual or like gender binary characters are in literature and when I'm randomly picking things up without consciously looking for it to be queer, it rarely is queer because the stuff that people are often talking about in the mainstream like literary world is less often queer. So I think that's an interesting reflection as somebody who has been making an effort to read queer literature that it's still, you know, less than a third of my reading. I, 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 I've not done the percentage calculation, but my rough maths would be that's about 25% of my reading. So I would like that to be more, but I would also just like more queer books um, to make their way through the publishing industry. That would be wonderful. And also a pet peeve of mine is books that kind of hide that they're queer. And this is rarely because of the author. This is often a marketing strategy to kind of just leave that element out because they feel it may deter readers and that infuriates me. I did actually write a little blog piece on my blog about the topic of hiding the lady love in um, fiction. So if you want to read that I will link it down a lot below but it's a subject I have a lot of thoughts on. Um, I will definitely be participating in every single Queer Lit Readathon in the new year, um, if there could be one every quarter that would be amazing but I know that's a lot of work so <laughs> um, I will just continue to make a conscious effort and hopefully I can grow that percentage. I didn't do a genre breakdown mainly because when I started I found myself getting a little bit stressed because I was like, is this fantasy? Is this romance? Like where do I categorise it? Is this science fiction? Is this fantasy? Is this literary fiction? Is it historical fiction? I get a little bit stressed and um, on Goodreads, I just categorise things by multiple genres. I would still say from my brief overview that most of what I read, or not most of what I read, but the biggest um, genre that I read the most of in, in, the, in the year was um, fantasy, but I did read some sci-fi, I did read some historical romance, I read a couple of contemporary romances because I'm, you know, as I've mentioned a million and one times, uh, getting into that a little bit. I read some literary fiction, some historical fiction, a couple, some classics, not that many classics to be honest. Um, some non-fiction as we've established, 13 of those. But it's all a little bit murky in my mind where things fall. I mean some things have a clear category but I, it's just all a bit too arbitrary for me to say this is how much I read of each thing and this is the percentage of my reading that I read of each thing in my mind. So I would say fantasy is the biggest category but um, I still read tons of other stuff which is great. I mean I, I like reading eclectically and I hope I continue to read eclectically but equally I'm the kind of person who goes through little binges so if I read a fantasy book I adore I want to read more like that. Like if it's a historical fantasy book I tend to then read like a bunch of historical fantasy in a row or if I read a like gothic thriller historical novel then I'll want to read like five of those in a row. Same goes for sort of like middle grade fantasy or you know political non-fiction. I do tend to binge a little bit, that's the kind of reader I am. But what I did think was interesting was the age categories that I read. So um, I don't think any of this is that surprising but I still think it's interesting. I read 91 books that were aimed at adults 20 books are aimed at young adults and 14 books are aimed at children, minus obviously the 20 I mentioned at the beginning because we're talking about my recreational reading. Um, so, I mean, I always knew I read mainly adult books, so this is not really a surprise. Um, I would like to keep reading more children's books though because I think I read more of my children's literature in the second half of the year, um, especially as, like I said, I'm a, I'm a binge reader so I read a lot of good books for the Blue Peter Prize which made me want to read even more amazing middle grade and um, I plan on, you know, reading more of that in the new year. Because, but most of this isn't about judging myself or setting new goals, it's just interesting is what I would say. I then made a note of some of the formats in which I read my books because somebody specifically asked um, how many ebooks I read so I also thought I would take a note of the audiobooks I read. Um, I read 29 ebooks and I had 33 audiobooks which I didn't actually do the math so let's get the calculator up means I read 128 minus 29 minus uh, 33, 66 
physical books. Um, they could have been um, from any number of different places, owned or borrowed. Um, but 66 physical, 29 ebooks, and 33 audiobooks. Uh, which doesn't terribly surprise me. I like reading in all different formats and I think there's a time and a place for each format within my life. If anything, I would say I was expecting there to be more audiobooks on there, but I think if I listen to an audiobook, although I'm always listening to audiobooks, they take me longer to listen to than to read a physical book, so that's probably why I didn't read as many or listen to as many audiobooks in the year. I also think that's got a bearing on what Goodreads tells me is my overall page count. So my overall page count, this is according to Goodreads, and according to how long they have um, noted down each book I've read is I didn't double check if each of them was right or I was reading a specific edition, so this is pretty rough. Um, I read 34,879 pages. But as we've just established, 33 of those books were audiobooks. I didn't physically read all of those pages. I listened to um, again, about like 25% of those pages, but it's still interesting to know. And um, average length of book according to Goodreads, based on what I was reading, was 253 pages. What I notice when I pick up a book is it tends to be around 300 pages. But obviously I've read a few that are a lot chunkier than that, and then I've read a few that are, you know, like 50 pages. So that um, is where you get your average from. But it is interesting, and according to Goodreads, the shortest book I read was called Beneath the Dead Oak Tree by Emily Carroll, and that was actually a like comic book pamphlet, so it was very short and it was 28 pages. And the longest book I read, which to my surprise actually, is Serpent and Dove, Dove by Shelby Mahurin, which was 513 pages. I kind of thought there would be something longer than that on this list, but clearly there isn't. I, I just like, I read some Juliette Marillier books this year and they're usually quite long, so I'm, I'm like surprised that Seed of Seven Waters wasn't longer, for example, than Serpent and Dove, but apparently not. Actually, I'm gonna check that. Um, I also listened to Serpent of Dove, Serpent and Dove. I can't type and think at the same time. Um, so I didn't technically read any of those 513 pages if we're talking about like the physical act of reading. Um, Seer of Seven Waters, no it's only 400 and something pages, well it felt a lot longer. <laughs> um, it's so interesting. The books that ne don't necessarily feel the longest when they are the longest, because I felt like Serpent and Dove was quite fast paced and quick. But that's not necessarily an indication of page length, is it? And then the other stat that Goodreads gives me is the most popular and least popular book I read, not according to my ratings, but how many people have read them. So, I don't think this is that surprising, but the book I read for the first time in 2019 that the most people have rated on Goodreads is uh, Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I mean, everyone talks about that book, so I'm not that surprised. It's had over 316,000 ratings. I enjoyed it, but I actually don't think I'm going to continue on with the series because I haven't had any inclination to since I finished the first book, but that's not necessarily a criticism, it's just not really the book for me now. <laughs> and then the least popular book I read only has two ratings, one of which is mine, so only one other person has rated it, was Hercules, Bampots and Heroes by Matthew Fitt, and that is a children's, like, middle grade illustrated book retelling the 12 labours of Hercules in Greek mythology, but in Scots, which is also possibly one of the reasons it's not been rated that much in Goodreads. Firstly, it's a children's book, I don't know how many children use Goodreads, and also it's in Scots, so, it, it, you know, <laughs> how many people are reading books in Scots, even in Scotland, not all of them. So, um, it's a shame it's not had more ratings, but if you read Scots, then I would encourage you to pick it up because it's brilliant. I loved it. I will be reviewing it uh, in full in my end of month wrap up because I only read it in December, but it was brilliant. So even though it's the least popular according to ratings, I gave it five stars and think it deserves a little bit more um, praise. Oh, and I didn't notice, but Goodreads also tells me that my average rating was 3.9, which isn't surprising given that we already noticed that most of the books I rated were four stars. In terms of other stats I've noted down, I reread re four books, so that's only 124 of those books were new books, whereas four I had read before and was rereading. Um, that was Radiance and three of the books in the Charlie Bone series, um, which is a middle grade series I read as a kid. I then also uh, noted down uh, the uh, gender of the authors I was reading because someone was interested in that. I'm not surprised by any of this, but I read 107 books by women, I read three books by non-binary authors, and I read 18 books by men. 
Again, I, I'm not surprised by these numbers. And then I actually have nothing else written down. So those are all the stats I made a note of. I don't know if any of that's interesting. Um, I think I did do a video like this last year and I just think it's interesting. <laughs> so I would be interested to hear about kind of your reading stats, what's something about your reading in 2019 that perhaps was interesting to you. Um, what would you like to change or do more of, say, in uh, 2020? But that's it, <laughs> I think. Um, hopefully you have found this video vaguely interesting. I found it interesting looking up everything for it, so um, there we go. <laughs> I don't really know what else there is to say. Until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys!